Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Weathers, representing Beginnings Treatment Centers. Happy to meet with you today. This message is for therapists. Uh, my own background is in clinical psychology. I've been operating as a recovery coach for the last 10 years, including my work leading psychoeducational groups here at Beginnings Treatment Centers. I want to share some information with you that you may not be aware of. I hadn't uh, been aware of it myself in years of, of clinical practice. The Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Administration in Washington, uh, called SAMHSA for short, uh, recently documented that up to 50% of clients that come to see therapists and other mental health providers um, are presenting with uh, 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 co-occurring disorders but, but are, have active addictions. That is, they're addicted to drugs or alcohol. That's a shocking statistic to me. Up to 50% of the clients that come to see us, those clients that are presenting with depression or anxiety, uh, relationship issues, marital problems, uh, work-related problems, etc. At the same time as they're coming in with those problems, and they typically present with those problems, that's what they tell us, also have an active substance addiction. And so the implications of this are pretty significant. Because if I or you are working with a client that is, is struggling with, let's say, depression or anxiety, and, and, and that that problem is being compounded by uh, an addictive behavior, an addictive problem, any work or progress that you or I would make with that depression or anxiety is going to be significantly hamstrung by the addiction. So a couple of observations about this. Uh, I'm really struck by the fact that, that most of us in our clinical training, in fact I spoke recently to a psychiatrist that was speaking to this, at most have a single course in graduate school or medical school to address addiction. I've talked to some providers that only had a single lecture in graduate school. That's typically been uh, replaced more recently by having at least a single course. But I think most of us would acknowledge that if we're working with that kind of uh, preponderance of uh, individuals coming to see us with addiction, 50% may be presenting with addictive disorders, that many of us, if not most of us, simply do not have enough clinical experience, both in terms of course, uh, coursework, theoretical research background, as well as clinical experience with addiction to really address the complexities of addiction. So there's a training issue for sure. And secondly, I want to address addiction in the brain. Is that, that when I say that, that therapy, uh, dealing with some co-occurring disorder, is going to be curtailed by the presence of addiction, what's going on in the brain? If you think about this, no matter if you're a cognitive behavioral therapist, my background or a psychoanalyst or anything in between, that to be dealing with a client who's experiencing some version of brain hijack, either in active addiction or in early recovery, the very resources that we would use to help, help to track and access clients' cognitions and affect themselves are going to be minimally available owing to the fact that we have what's called hypofrontality. The frontal cortex is going to be limited in, in terms of being accessed. And so that does pose a very serious problem in terms of trying to make headway on clients presenting problems if there is an unaddressed addiction.